Apple just announced a brand new Mac, a new desktop, and it's called the Mac Studio. This was announced at yesterday's keynote, and I was really looking forward to this keynote because I was expecting Apple to refresh a new iMac, the 27-inch. Last year, they refreshed the 24-inch, and I had sold my iMac Pro that came out in 2017 because I was anticipating a refresh of the 27-inch with the new architecture because the performance is significant. I've been using this MacBook Air 8GB unit, 7-core GPU for this channel ever since. And I'm using the Canon R5, 8K oversample 4K video, bit rates of at least 470 megabits per second. And this thing, well, it can export and render quicker than my iMac Pro could do, which was four times the price. And that's really, really huge. So when we just got the 24 inch last year, I was disappointed. And so this year, this March, even though the rumors weren't saying it, I was expecting its replacement. And well, I got the replacement, but it wasn't the replacement I had hoped for. If you go to Apple's website right now, you'll see that that 27 inch is completely gone. The only option is the 24 inch iMac. And of course we have the Studio Mac. So I was a little bit disappointed while I was watching the live stream yesterday, their keynote, and that disappointment, well, it started to go away and I started to, well, become a little bit excited. I've got Macs in this house. I've been using them for years. I've got a 2009 Mac Mini that is still running and I use it for a uh, home theater. 2009, it's, what are we, in 2022? It's 13 years old. And I've also got a 2014 I, or Mac Mini. It's going on eight years. They just last. So I kind of looked at this a little bit and I thought, well, okay, let's look at the M1 Max. It has an M1 Max in it. The latest MacBook Pro has an M1 Max too, 30 core GPU, and it sells for $34.99 with 32 gigs of RAM. The Mac Studio with the M1 Max sells at $19.99, but it only comes with 512 gigs, not one terabyte, so an extra $200 to bump it up. And to give it the same 32 cores, again, it's another $200, leaving us at $24.99. But that's still $1,000 cheaper than the MacBook Pro. I, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, but Simon, don't be an idiot. Come on. The MacBook Pro comes with a monitor, it comes with a trackpad and a keyboard, and Apple charges you $200 for the keyboard. They charge you extra for the trackpad. They charge you, well, the, the Mac Studio is, what, $1,599, somewhere around that price? And I hear you, but just bear with me for a minute. I, I get it. If you're like 18, 16, and this is your first computer, you have to buy the monitor, the keyboard, the trackpad, the mouse. I've been in computers for a long time. I've got spare 4K monitors in the house. I've got spare full HD monitors in the house. I've got multiple keyboards and trackpads. So I started to think about this a little bit differently. You see, every three years is generally when I update my computers. Not all of them, as I just told you. I've got home theaters that are working perfectly and I don't need to replace them. They've been going for 13 years. But for my video stuff as my core machine, I, I find that every three years, there's enough of an update that it saves me time, which saves me money, so I end up upgrading. So $24.99, uh, let, let's take a look at the entry level Mac Studio. And I look at all the specifications here. I do a lot of 4K video, I do some 8K video. And the M1 Max is perfect because it has those extra cores for transcoding, for encoding Apple ProRes for working with 8K and 4K, and it really eats it up. And again, if you're doing ProRes, and I highly recommend if you're editing video, you want to be using a video editing codec like ProRes, or um, I forgot the other one, uh, DNND, XND, uh, sorry, uh, Avid's, Avid's codecs. And, and if you do that, even this thing here can edit 8K video very fast. It just, when it comes to the export times, it's insane. For a three minute video, it can take 90 minutes to do an export. But the M1 Max is really, really aimed at helping us encode 8K and 4K. It, it's the perfect processor. But when we look at the options, for an extra $200, we can bump it up from 24 to 32 GPU cores. So that's a no brainer. Let's go ahead and do that because we cannot upgrade any of the internals here. And the next upgrade option is the storage, the SSD. For an extra $200, you can go to one terabyte. Now, I highly recommend a minimum of one terabyte, no matter what you do, especially these days. Now, depending on what type of storage you buy, 
Well, it can either last you a couple of years, the life of the computer, or it can last you 10 or 15 years. And it has to do with the program erase cycles of an SSD. And if you're buying a laptop that just gives you enough space and you're currently, you're always operating around 80, 90% full, you're always having to delete stuff, then it's that last 10 to 20% that it's constantly erasing and programming over and over again. And you basically drastically reduce the lifespan of your computer, especially on an Apple where the SSD is soldered right into the unit. Now, in this case, the processor, the M1 Max, it's got your RAM, it's got your storage, the processing all as a system on a chip. And while I used to hate this idea of soldering everything onto the motherboard, as a system on a chip, it makes a huge amount of sense from the specifications. So back to the storage options. I have a ton of storage. I have well over 15 terabytes of storage, but it comes in various forms. There's RAID arrays, there's uh, CF Express cards that I used to store stuff on. There's video grade storage solutions that I use. And if you can, you can, you can go up to the eight terabyte on this Mac Studio, but only do that if you absolutely have to do it for use on your workflow. Because when it comes to that upgrade cycle, let's say it's every three years, which is quite common, then you're replacing your storage. And that becomes very expensive. Whereas if you get a storage solution, you only replace your storage when you have to. So for me, I think $24.99 is the perfect price for the M1 Studio, or sorry, the, the Mac Studio. I'm still trying to get used to all these different names, like the M1 Max MacBook Pro. It's really quite a mouthful. So $24.99, I think, is the best price for this unit. When I looked at the M1 Ultra, it's double the price. It's $39.99. Now, granted, you do get 64 gigs of that price. You do get one terabyte, so you don't really need to upgrade it from there. But I think it's a very, very good unit. So $24.99, you don't get a monitor. You don't get any keyboards or anything. But for me, because I've got keyboards lying around because I got a monitor, I can use that. But I'm probably going to get the, what do they call it, studio monitor? Let's just call it the new monitor that's aimed for the Mac Studio. It's around $15.99. And I'll tell you why I'm looking at that in a little bit later, but let's just look at the cost of the unit itself. Because you can get cheaper monitors out there. You Instead of getting a 5K Retina display, you can get an LG 4K monitor, and they're well under $1,000. So $24.99. Now, in three years, if you're looking at upgrading, well, at that time, you can expect a salvage value on your Mac when you sell it for being anywhere from $1,000 to $1,200. The resale value on Macs is absolutely insane. That's one of the reasons why I do update my main one every few years because I look at the resale price and I'm just thinking, are you kidding me? Somebody's willing to pay this? And within the first year of ownership, quite often, you can sell your Mac for a little bit more than what Apple sells um, their, what do they call it, the, the refurbs. You can actually sell your used gear. And I've sold my used gear for a little bit more than what Apple sells the refurbished for. And with those refurbs, you get a 12-month warranty. So just assuming it's $1,000 in three years from now, that reduces the price of your next one from $24.99 down to $14.99. And you don't have to replace your monitor if it's still working and you're still doing 4K or 8K video workflows. You're probably not going to need a new monitor. And a keyboard, unless it stops working, you're not going to need a new keyboard. Same with a trackpad. And so as you go through time, your life cycle costs are going to be significantly reduced. And then when you come to your three-year upgrade cycle, you can say, well, okay, I had a $3,000 budget last time around. I'm going to keep that budget of $3,000. And now what you can start to do is look at increasing the performance. And that's really, really huge, or maybe increasing the RAM. So I, I, I'm kind of more enamored by this model, but let me tell you why I, I think that the monitor isn't necessarily a bad deal. A lot of people are saying, you know, for a 27 inch, this is just way too expensive. And well, that's a faulty argument because a 27 inch can be quite often 4K. Are they comparing it to other 4K, 5K, or even 6K monitors? And when I look at the previous offerings like the LG 5K Fine Monitor, it's still pretty expensive. It's over $1,000. And if you look at the 4K LG Fine, it's almost half the price. And that's really, really significant. So if you just want to work off a 4K monitor, then yeah, don't get it. Just go ahead and get a 4K monitor. You're going you're gonna to get much better value. But there is one thing that a lot of people aren't talking about. 
they do mention that it does have um, system on a chip in it. I think it's, is it the A13 or the A15? I believe it's the A13. I'll flash it up on the screen. But what's significant about this is performance. I've been using external monitors for years, and whenever I hook up like a 4K external monitor to my MacBook Pro, every time I see the CPU jump up. And in the past, in my 2015 MacBook Pro, I saw it jump up from about 40% to 60%, and it was pretty, pretty significant. Having that chip in the monitor takes away all the processing power away from the computer, so the monitor is doing all its processing power. It doesn't have to worry about you don't have to worry about the actual processor on the Mac having to do extra effort. So the Mac can just focus on the video rendering, the graphics and all that sort of stuff. So there is that benefit. And yes, you get a better camera. You do get that uh, center stage. You do get better audio. And those are nice features. That to me wouldn't be enough to justify the price. But when you're taking away some of the processing authority away from the, the computer, and you're letting the computer just focus on processing, whether it's be GPUs or processing itself from the core itself, uh, the processor, I, I think that is potentially a big gain. And again, if you go ahead and buy the Mac Studio and the Studio Monitor, you're only gonna have to buy that Studio Monitor once. It's gonna last you many, many years. Uh, quite often in the industry, I think they a lot of companies will look at you know a seven year life cycle. Some companies won't even replace a monitor until it dies and uh, in a lot of office settings I still see 14 and 15 inch monitors still in use um, it's completely ridiculous because when you look at and a lot of these people are doing accounting when a 27 inch or a 20 inch or even a 24 inch would put everything all on one screen and be a lot easier to work people would be more productive so I, I think that the studio monitor does have its place it does have value but what you have to do is you have to look at your capabilities and what matters to you but I get it, it's not for everyone. Not being able to update your storage, your RAM, processor, whatever it is, for many is rather limiting. But for me, I see it a little bit differently. I used to spend an awful lot of time maintaining and fixing my computers. I used to create separate partitions on my drive so that way every six to 12 months, I'd refresh the boot partition because it would get slow and sluggish and it was like having a new computer again. But I got tired of that. I got tired of sitting down to do work on my Windows machine, and I usually have to I usually have to spend some time fixing something. Something would go wrong. A driver system, the system registry would cause a problem. And when I sit down to work on a Mac. I don't have that anymore. And I used to completely moan about how SSDs were soldered onto the board as the RAM. There was no need for it. But now with a system on a chip, having your RAM on the same chip as your processor and your GPU is huge, especially if you want as much RAM as you can get. You got a system with 128 gigs? Well, your GPU can access that full 128 gigs. Plus, you're not having to go out to the bus. Your performance is instant. It's a lot quicker. So when you're processing an awful lot of data for graphics and video, it's very, very quick. So when I look at the memory I'm, I need, I, I think that 32 gigs will be more than enough. I had the iMac Pro, it had 32 gigs, and I was editing 4K and some 8K video. So with everything system on a chip, I think that 32 gigs is going to be more than enough. And with the M1 Max being much faster, more capable than the iMac Pro, and of course this old MacBook Air, well, it's only a year old, I don't see myself needing to go with the M1 Ultra. I don't see myself worrying about, yeah, I need to update the GPU in a few years, or I need to update the RAM, I need to get a huge amount of RAM, I need to get eight terabytes of storage, and I don't. I, I would love to, to have the money to be rich, to be able to afford to get a fully decked out Mac Studio, but it doesn't really make any sense. I need enough storage for, my, for the system to operate, but eight terabytes, is not enough for running my business. It's not enough. I have so much storage, and that's why I have RAID arrays. I have SSD CF Express cards with content saved on them Why I edit off multiple drives because there's no way you can have enough storage on a computer. So I put enough storage on the computer that I can do the daily operations, and all my files, all the work that I edit off of is externally. And with Thunderbolt 4 ports, I don't have an issue. And even running off of USB 3.0, I don't have any issues. I used to edit off the Samsung Evos, 
And I don't recommend doing that. I really don't. If you like Samsung, go with the pros because when you're doing video, it's so highly intensive that you're going to wear out those drives a whole lot quicker. And even Samsung will tell you they're not really designed for video editing. They're general purpose drives. There's also Angelbird SSDs and CF Express cards. They can more than handle high intensive video use applications. So the one thing I would suggest putting some more of your money into is not really like eight terabytes when it comes to the internal storage of your computer is external storage. And if you look at external storage, like, like Angel Bird's four terabyte CF Express card, it's $1,800 or $799.99. And that's a lot of money. So when you look at Apple's charging you, well, maybe $2,100 for eight terabytes, it's not so much. The only thing with Apple is we don't know what the PE cycle is for that. Can it go 7,000 cycles? Can it go 100,000 cycles, 50,000, 300 cycles? I'm not willing to put that much money into an SSD when I don't know how many PE cycles it can have or how many terabytes written. That's really important to know. And also, every three years when I go and upgrade or if I have to repair something, it's absolutely ridiculous because now that storage gets in the way. It makes the cost more prohibitive because my storage, I don't replace every three years. It depends on how much use it gets. That will drive the update cycle on my storage, not how often I need a computer. And again, the same with the monitor. So uh, let me know what you think. Um, my, my capabilities are obviously very different from you, but I think that this Mac Studio is, um, for the price, a very, very good unit. And if all you can afford right now is $2,000, I'd still recommend getting the one terabyte. I'd recommend bumping up to 32 cores, but then just use one of your old monitors you have around the house because the power for this price point is very, very good. And I, I just... I'm amazed at how, how well this MacBook Air performs. It's a seven core GPU. I know I keep saying that, but still seven core GPU, eight gigs of RAM. And you look at how many videos I've put out on this channel. I'm doing uh, the first two months of this year, I was putting out one to three videos a day, 4K, 470 megabits per second. I work on large films that are 90 minutes or two hours long, and this can handle it. So a Mac Studio with an M1 Max, 32 core GPU, one terabyte of storage. Yeah, I think that's more than enough for me right now. And that Mac Pro, whenever it comes out, wow. I can only imagine that the, <laughs> that the M1 Ultra will probably be the base level unit, and I bet they're going to have another uh, system in there. But let me know what you think. At this point, we don't know um, how well these truly perform. We just have Apple's numbers. And one thing I would love to see, they didn't do this in their keynote, is they didn't show us how the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max compared to the M1 and previous Intel boxes. I wish they had shown us multiple machines there. I think that would have really, really helped. That left me having to go back and do research, look at previous keynotes to see where they pegged the M1. And I, and I, I thought for this video, without actually having one in the studio, it's hard to really say. Now, I haven't pre-ordered one right now. I was getting ready to do it yesterday. But I was taking a look. I wanted to really think if I needed the Ultra. And then when I woke up this morning, I'm now looking at a two-month delivery. So I'm going to avoid pre-ordering. And what I'm going to wait and see is that they're going to be available in stores starting the 8th. I'm just wondering if somehow I can snag one at one of the stores instead of waiting two months. But what do you think? Are you interested in getting one of these computers? And if you don't like Macs, let me know why too. I get it. They're not for everybody. Um, but one thing I want you to know is I'm not just a a Mac fanboy. I've had pretty well every computer there is out there. I have, and these are computers that I've owned too. I've had an AS400, yes, in my house. I've had Commodores, I've had Amigas. I've worked with Linux, various different flavors, um, Debian, uh, SUSE, Red Hat. I've worked with FreeBSD, uh, Unix, various flavors of Unix. I've worked with Windows 95, 98, Millennium, NT, 2000. I've worked with Windows Server. And of course, recently the Macintosh. And I move around a lot because what usually happens is what I'm working with doesn't give me enough capabilities or my capabilities change and have me migrate. So I'm with Mac right now. I've been with them since Tiger. But that doesn't mean in the future I won't jump away. But for now, for at least the next three to five years, I don't really see that changing. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.